All right, I'm back with another video here. Let me, uh, looking at this uh, little creep, Rob Bell from hell is what I like to call him. But it's a, this is about the Merchant Church. I'm going to talk a little bit about it after I get done uh, listening to this guy's stupid video. But um, some of the things this guy says is pretty disgusting. And But, yeah, let's get into it. I mean, I don't even really have to even say anything. I mean, you guys pretty much can just look at me like, well, yeah, this guy's a nut. <laughs> but, yeah, let's just... Let's just watch it. Several years ago, we had an art show at our church, and people brought in all kinds of sculptures and paintings, and we put them on display, and there was this one piece that had a quote from Gandhi in it. And lots of people found this piece compelling. They'd stop and sort of stare at it and take it in and reflect on it, but not everybody found it that compelling. Somewhere in the course of the art show, somebody attached a handwritten note to the piece, and on the note, they had written, reality check, he's in hell. Gandhi's in hell? He is? And someone knows this for sure? Uh, yeah, because we have a perfect standard called the King James Bible, which you wouldn't know anything about because you're a New Age message Thunderstruck user. But anyway, um, I mean, Gandhi was a, he was a Hindu. You know, he might as well have just been an atheist. But, I mean, he was also a pacifist as well. So yeah, Gandhi was in hell. He never, he never repented and turned to Jesus Christ. When did he ever do that? You know, so that's the standard. Apparently this little... Twerp here doesn't know anything about that. And, and felt the need to let the rest of us know, will only a few select people make it to heaven? And will billions and billions of people burn forever in heaven? Yes, they will. That's what the Bible teaches, you know. I mean, good grief. I mean, the Bible believing Christianity is a very small number. Um, <laughs> there's just so many people now that don't even care what the Bible has to say or anything like that. I mean, it's so bad. You know, you go ask any, you, you go ask anybody on the street. They're just not in touch with reality whatsoever. They don't even have a clue about what's going on, all that, except what's in their own little naive bubble, you know. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, billions and billions of people will burn forever, obviously hell and if that's the case how do you become one of the few is it what you believe or what you say or what you do or who you know or something that happens in your heart or do you need to be initiated or baptized or take a class or converted or being born again how does one become one of these few and then there is the question behind the questions the real question what is God like because millions and millions of people were taught that the primary message, the center of the gospel of Jesus, is that God is going to send you to hell unless you believe in Jesus. And so what gets subtly sort of caught and taught is that Jesus rescues you from God. But what kind of God? Jesus res rescues you from God? What? Excuse me? Jesus Christ is God. Jesus rescues from God. I mean, what in the world? I mean, this just sounds like your average atheist, you know, doesn't even know who God is. It's pathetic. Jesus rescues from, rescues you from God. I mean, give me a break. Disgusting. God is that, that we would need to be rescued from this God. How could that God ever be good? How could that God ever be trusted? And how could that ever be good news? Uh, what did Jesus save you from? Your sins. Did he save you from an evil God, like this little princess says? No. He saves you from your sins. That's what he saved you from. He didn't save you from an evil God. Give me a break. This guy's a true Satanist. He's just flat out attacking God in his character. See, that's what a lot of the modern church movers do. But let's continue. Let's finish this video up. I'm going to talk a little bit more about it. This is why lots of people want nothing to do with the Christian faith. They see it as an endless list of absurdities and inconsistencies, and they say, why would I ever want to be a part of that? See, what we believe... Because men love darkness more than light, because their deeds are evil. ...about heaven and hell is incredibly important because it exposes what we believe about who God is and what God is like. 
What you discover in the Bible is so surprising, unexpected, and beautiful that whatever we've been told or taught, the good news is actually better than that, better than we could ever imagine. The good news is that love wins. Isn't that nice? Does that want to make you just go give him a hug? Not me. But, <laughs> oh, give me a break. That's disgusting. Um, Colossians chapter 3. Verse 6, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Okay. And which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them, but, but but now ye also put off all these all these wrath, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. So again, change life after salvation, obviously. But anyway. I mean, this guy's just a full on Satanist. That's what it is too. The whole emergent church movement is just they don't care anything about what the scripture says. I know Brian and I talked about this last night, that people don't care anymore what the Bible has to say. They really just make up a God of their own imagination and just run with it and have no, don't give any thought in the world about what the Bible says. You know, you, you know, you have your beliefs and that's great. You know, you want to follow that Bible to the T. That's your thing. You know, I, I hear this from lost family members all the time. It's just, you know, and they sit here and say, oh, you, you say the world's so bad. Well, the world's always been bad. I mean, it shows you they're not awake. You know, they don't have a clue to sit here and say the world's, it was always been bad. Yeah, sure it was. It's always been sin. But is it as bad now? I think it's gotten a lot worse, especially the explosion of the internet. Things have gotten a lot worse. Now, let me talk about this emergent church thing because... I know some of you out there, you guys work secular jobs. I don't at the moment. Um, the Lord's taking care of my needs, and and I really appreciate everybody's support on that. Um, but the thing is, is that you know you go and you're you're probably around new age Christians all the time. You're probably around these church these church goers, these babble. Uh, Babel worshipers that go to these big huge churches and they're charismatic, you know, and they're just all about love, you know, and, and they don't ever talk about anything, you know, they don't, they don't talk about anything that bears any fruit. It's always just positive thinking, you know, and get the negative mindset. You know, I mean, I've been through the whole thing before. I mean, I've seen it. Okay. And I've been around these charismatic nuts myself. All right. And... They walk around and put on the Christian act and stuff, and but at the same time, they're so dead inside. They they can't comprehend anything, at anything at all. You know, I mean, they claim they sit here and walk around being a Christian, but yet their life doesn't reflect on it. You know, they're friends with the world. They're friends with wicked people. You know, they they profess Jesus. You know. That's why Jesus said in Mark chapter 7, I believe it is. Uh, How be it in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines and commandments of men. And verse before that says, Well, had Zias prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, The people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Exactly. Their heart is far from the Lord. Absolutely. You know, like I said, you go you go to these people, and I've been around them before, and they just they will lie to your face, and they will they will stab you in the back, and, and as soon as possible, you know, they won't be truthful with you at all. They are some of the most dishonest people in the world, but yet they're Christian, you see, because they believed they had a profession. You know, just like this Rob Bell guy. I mean, he believes in Jesus. Is he saved? Obviously not. That's pretty clear. So, I mean. Like I said, you get around these people and they don't really care anything about what the Bible has to say. They'll say, well, the Bible is written the Bible is written by men. You know, it's just more of kind of like guidelines. It's not something we should take a hard stand on. I mean, that's what they say. It's sad, but that's what they say. You know, I'm a good person. You know, God knows my heart. 
Yeah, sure he does. Yeah, he knows it's deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? Jeremiah 17, 9. So, um, and just like with my former boss I worked with, you know, he was a stupid charismatic and, you know, professor, you know, professor of faith, you know, Christian man. Sure he was. You know, pretty much just got rid of me for no reason because he didn't like me because I wasn't prim and proper like he is. You know, you look at these people, they're just so, they're just got, they're so nicely dressed and they just, they look so good, you know, and they have their stylish clothes, you know, and it's like with me, they look at me and they like, it's like I'm the bum, you see, because I don't look like them. You know, ever feel like that before? Do you ever feel like you're a bum? To a lot of people, they look at you and you, you're not all dressed all super nice and you know, and you're just, you don't look like this real fashionable guy or girl or whatever. You know, most of you ladies out there probably wear uh, dresses now, you know, and modest clothing since you become saved. And you, you're you looked at and you're looked as foolish. You're looked at as, you know, ugh, you know. You know, they expect women to be, just basically look like whores. You know, and they expect men to look like these uh, very classy with the collared shirts, you know, and the golf clothes. And I'm serious. I mean, it's what I see. Um, cause my family for years has tried to push that on me, and I never would ever conform to that image. I hated it. I it always uh, it always repulsed me to see those kind of people. These real preppy looking people that are all have these nice real clothes on I couldn't stand it I hate it just ugh. and you know and the most clothes I might buy you know is just like I might buy some clothes from Goodwill or something like that you know just something decent to wear I don't have to have the great latest and greatest stuff and if you're about the latest and greatest and stuff you know then you're probably worldly you're probably carnal you know but the thing is is that you have people like this and you have these professing Christians going along in the name of Jesus Christ but yet they look at a real Bible believer and they look at you like you're a loser it's already happened to me I know so you're not going to fit into this world it's going to be really hard for us to even have work anymore because it's getting so bad and I think it's getting to that point now where it's getting so bad now that even like um, the professing Christians out there will even want to silence us. You know, I mean, because they're they're serving the Antichrist. When the Antichrist shows up, they'll bow down and worship him, and take his mark, and go to hell. I mean, that's exactly what they're going to do. You know, um, God is a God of wrath. And he's a God of judgment, and the wrath of God is coming upon these people. And if you had these people in your life, these professing Christians, these professing New Agers, emergent church believers, whatever they are, you know, they don't care about what the Bible has to say, the wrath of God's coming. You know, it's really tough because, you know, you have to realize that you're weak, but God is mighty. And let me show you something real quick. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It says... It says, uh, verse 26, For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble, are called. But God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. How many of you out there, I'm sure there's some of you out there that probably never been an outcast. You know, that's fine. But you are now. But the thing is that I guarantee most of us in our lifetime have been the outcasts of this world. We we have always been looked down upon our whole lives. That's me. You know, my wife's the same way. We've always been criticized and mocked and stuff our whole lives. And, and when we get saved, it's like I understand it now. You know. These people, these people call themselves good people under the name of Jesus, but yet they mock and ridicule somebody like me. You know, somebody doesn't dress the same way as they do. You know, doesn't like the same things that they do. See, what is that? 
pride, ego, egotistical, narcissism, whatever you want to call it. That's what it is. But uh, I don't want to make this video too longer than it has to be, but um, the wrath of God is coming up on those people. They're going to be running and screaming for their lives in the time of Jacob's trouble. And that time's coming very, very soon. Just remember that you have to deal with some of these charismatic nuts and the emergent church people. They don't care about anything about the Bible. Shake the dust off of you. Move on. Don't get into strife and contention. Okay? Don't do that. Just witness to them. And if they don't want to hear it, well, it's on them. My hands are clean. I tried. You know, especially if you have family members that are like that. You know. So. But, um, yeah, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.